Hi, I'm Vin with Boris FX, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to use Particle Emitter 3D to recreate a classic aerial shot from the Flash television series. Now, before I go any further, I want to give a shout out and thank you to Grant Cook over at Lone Archer Films for the inspiration on this tutorial. He's got some pretty incredible tutorials for those new to After Effects over at Film Learning that are absolutely worth checking out. Okay, so like I said, what I wanted to do was recreate this classic aerial shot of the Flash running using only effects that are available to me as part of BCC 10. To do this, I'm primarily going to be using Particle Emitter 3D, but we are going to look at some fast film glow, light rays, and lightning effects as well. Now, Particle Emitter 3D is a pretty complex filter with a lot of depth to it. There's a lot you can do, and if you've never used it before, it can seem a bit overwhelming. But honestly, the basics of recreating this effect are fairly easy. To begin with, I'm going to take my aerial footage and drop it into a new comp. The first thing I want to do is create a new solid. This is the layer that I'm going to apply BCC Particle Emitter 3D to. When I do, I get this nice but completely unflash like spray of particles. To simulate Barry running, I'm going to need to create some streaking. Now, I could manually adjust the parameters from scratch, but what I'm actually going to do is come up to my effects and presets and select from the pull down menu light streaks. And there I go, I get something pretty nice. Now while this is cool, this isn't nearly what I want, but like all presets, it's a very good place to start. So let's get that looking more like our speedster hero. First off, let's go down to the particle group. I'm going to set my particle size to 44. Now I could just set the overall color to a nice orangey red, but I want to give this some texture. So I'm going to set the color mode to Gradient Evolve. This will give me the more traditional red-orange look seen in the comics and on the television show. With that done, I'm going to move on to the Transform Particle group. I want to shrink the size of this streak a bit, so I'm going to set the Scale X and Scale Y to 77 each. Next, I'm going to go to my Emitter settings. The birth rate and lifespan are the most important parameters here. So I'm going to crank that birth rate up to about 1,345, but I'm going to drop that lifespan to 0.15. This will allow the streak to simulate him running across the screen. Next, I'm going to go down to the layer and change the layer mode to add. This will allow the effect to blend nicely with the footage. All right, so while I have the right color, the animation preset isn't working for me. I mean, Barry should be patrolling the streets of Central City, not kind of dancing around in the air like that. So what I could do is go in and change all the keyframes, but that's going to take a lot more work than necessary. What I want to do is create a path for Barry to run along. To do this, I'm going to change my emitter follow from position XY to mask layer. That'll allow me to take the pen tool and draw a mask around this building. Now I don't need to make it a completely straight line or it's going to look a little bit weird. After all, Barry needs to avoid traffic and pedestrians, so he's going to be running around a little bit. Since this is a fairly steady medium shot, I'm not going to worry too much about curve points. But if I were working with the highway shot that we saw earlier, which is from a much higher perspective, the curve points would help sell that effect better. Alright, once I've made my mask, I can see that my emitter has jumped to the topmost point. To animate his movement, I'm going to set my CTI to the first frame and move my path location. Depending on your mask, this path location may be a little bit different, but for me it's at around 135 degrees. What I want is for Barry to enter from the lower left, come up to this intersection, and then exit out the lower right of the frame. To get that to work, at frame 0, I'm going to turn on my stopwatch to create a keyframe, and then I'm going to move forward about 12 frames, and scrub the path location until he's out of the frame entirely. This will automatically set another keyframe. When I go to play it back, that looks nice. But if I look closely, my color gradient is actually a bit off. It kind of looks like he's running backwards. This is an easy fix. I'm going to go back up to my Evolve Gradient category, and then individually select and swap my color chips to reverse that gradient. Now if I want to, I can repeat the process by creating a second mask path on a new layer. Generally, I prefer to create new layers and mask paths each time Barry runs off the screen. This just helps to keep things organized. But I could certainly create a more elaborate mask path so that the whole scene is done in one loop, like I did for this shot. Regardless of how you choose to set up your mask path, the next thing that we want to do is add some lighting effects. I'm going to go to my effects and presets and type in BCC Fast Film Glow. And I'm going to drop that right on my solid layer. I'm going to set the intensity to about uh, 244. I'm going to set the color to something that's orangey red, my radius to about 10, and my threshold to about 77. Next, I'm going to go back to my presets and select BCC Rays Streaky. I'm going to drop that onto my layer, set the intensity to about 130, and the ray length to 25. 
Once I've done that, I can use my on-screen controls to position the source point at the intersection. This is going to give the effect of a little extra streakiness when he comes around that corner. All right, now for the good stuff. While this was all well and good, there's one thing we need to add to really bring this effect home. Barry may be the fastest man alive, but he'd be nothing without some good old speed force to tap into. And you know what that means? We get to play with some lightning. Now for my effects and presets menu, I'm going to go and select BCC Lightning and drop that right onto my layer under my light rays in the stack. In a minute, I'll do some quick keyframing on my source and destination points, but for now, I just want to set up the lightning. Feel free to experiment with various settings, but to recreate the look of my effect, which we saw earlier, this is what I need to do. I'm going to set my lightning number to 1, the width to 1.5, flash speed to 17, flash amount to 51, my core wiggliness should be set to 2.01, core wiggly amount should go to 9, detail to 76.2, taper percent to 31, taper amount to 63, and while we're at it, let's just turn on some anti-aliasing. What did all that do? Well, what it does is this creates a strong central core with a few thin strands of electricity shooting off of it. For a high aerial shot, this is going to work nicely. In a later tutorial, I'll recreate a close-up shot of Barry running where we can see the individual bolts of speed force flying off of him. Anyway, with that done, I want to go down to Glow Control. I'm going to set the width to 0, the inner color to yellow, inner opacity to 55, outer width to 27, outer color to red, outer opacity to 90, and that's getting things looking pretty great. The final thing that I need to do, of course, is to attach this lightning bolt to Barry. To do that, I'm going to go to the first frame just before we see him come into the shot. I'm going to set a keyframe for my source and destination points. I'll advance each frame and just move the source and destination to follow the streak. Fortunately, as I pointed out before, Barry is the fastest man alive, so not only can we make quick work out of keyframing here, it doesn't matter if I'm not perfectly aligned. In most cases, he'll be moving so fast, it won't even matter. Once I have everything the way I like, it's time for a couple of finishing tips. On each layer that I've used Particle Emitter 3D, I'm going to go into the Render Group. Here I can turn on my Anti-Aliasing and Motion Blur, which will slow down my render time a little bit, but will really give this whole effect a nice, blended look. Definitely experiment with different layouts and paths for Barry to run along. It's entirely up to you as to how you want him to run through your scene. But one final thing. If you remember the original clip, I have Barry running along this stretch of highway. He runs off the top and then comes around the side and runs under some bridges. It's a pretty basic After Effects trick, but you can just simply duplicate the layer and mask out the areas where the bridges are so that he appears to run under them. It's little moments like that that can really help sell this effect. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.